When I started doing this Bad Balance series, I had plans for some of the obvious SF4 characters, like Ae, Yun, and Yang, Vanilla, Sagat, Akuma, and Seth, or most of the low tiers of Super. But when I threw up that Elena video, people overwhelmingly asked for DJ. What's especially funny is most people asked for Ultra DJ specifically, which is ironically probably the best version of the character. What went wrong for DJ that everyone would ask for him? Well, I'll save you having to sit through the video and tell you he's not actually all that bad, so not really a candidate for a bad balance analysis. But since I got so many requests, and because how he came to be perceived as a bad character is kind of funny, I thought I'd do a video on him anyway. DJ is not really bad, as much as he is profoundly mediocre. He hasn't been the bottom 1 character in any version of SF4, but he's probably been bottom 5 for every single version since his debut in Super. I wouldn't say he has any significant counterpicks besides maybe Rose, but instead, he kind of slightly loses against everyone because his kit has really bad cohesion. It's hard to explain a lack of cohesion without going over absolutely everything, so I'm just going to go over DJ's strengths and weaknesses, maybe in comparison with some other characters. Charge back, forward punch is Air Slasher. It's quite a good fireball as they go, but it's charged, so there's a limit on how fast you can throw them, and it's actually somewhat bad at winning fireball wars. It's hard not to draw a comparison with Guile, who also has a charged fireball. In fact, they both have the same fireball charge speed, which is faster than most charge moves. Guile's Sonic Boom starts up in 9 frames and recovers in 21. Remember that second number. The recovery is so fast that a lot of dedicated fireball punishes can't easily be used on reaction to it. For comparison, Ryu's Hadouken, a good fireball in its own right, has 32 recovery frames. DJ's Air Slashes have 12 startup frames and 26 recovery frames. So somewhere in between. The numbers are flat better than Ryu's, but you'd hope so, since Ryu can spam his fireball and Hadoukens do 20 more damage than Air Slashes. Being 5 frames slower to recover than Guile might not seem like a lot, but I will say that anti-fireball tools work fine against Air Slashes. It's the difference between eating an ultra for throwing a fireball, and having people not even attempt ultras against your fireball spam unless they want to make a desperate read. I'm sure you can see these two scenarios are night and day. So how else does Air Slasher square up against Guile? Guile sacrifices down charge to throw Sonic Booms. He loses Flash Kick, but he has a plethora of good normal anti-airs he can use as backup. Without down charge, DJ's anti-air is kind of bad, and it's certainly not fast. I'll talk more about it when I'm talking about his normals. When charging, Guile has back short. A quick, low commitment way of approaching while keeping charge. He can use this to gain space during a fireball war, then quickly throw another fireball. DJ's ways of repositioning while keeping charge are nowhere near as good. You've got low roundhouse, which approaches but takes a really long time to whiff. And you've got light up kick, same deal. Guile's light sonic boom recovery means he's plus 10 on hit at worst. If you have a fireball connect, you can often tag on an extra hit to significantly increase your damage. DJ has really bad normals for tagging on these hits. and he's only plus 3 for a point blank connect. Guile's Sonic Boom recovery also means he can get some beefy damage in the corner. DJ can too, but since he's only plus 3 he has to pick up an unplinkable one frame link. You're probably saying, Baff, who cares if Air Slasher isn't as good as Sonic Boom? Every character has their own broken tools, and that one is Guile's, no one's fireball can measure up. Well, you're right, but Air Slasher is DJ's best tool too, and the crux of his neutral. DJ's best feature is a worse version of Guile's. EX Air Slasher is where things already start to fall apart. Unlike almost all other EX fireballs, DJ throws two fireballs instead of a single two-hit fireball. There's absolutely no upside to this. First of all, since the front slash is destroyed by other fireballs, it won't punish non-EX fireballs thrown at the same time. Okay. 
The duration is longer than just about all other EX fireballs in the game at 52 frames. That means you can just hold up forward when you see it and punish DJ with a jump in. Air Slasher hasn't changed much across any version of SF4, except for Arcade Edition where they made him take counter hit damage during the entire recovery for some reason. They reverted that in 2012 since it obviously wasn't good enough to warrant that kind of downside. This will actually be a theme with DJ's balance patches, and I'll talk about it later. DJ's next special is Rolling Sobot, Charge Back, Forward Kick. It's basically a bad version of Bison Scissor Kick. Like Bison, you can space it, and it does two ticks of chip damage on block. And like Bison, the medium and heavy versions are pretty unsafe on block. The big difference is that all of Bison's scissor kicks knock down, while DJ's medium and heavy versions don't. All this means for DJ is you don't get a wake-up mix-up, unlike almost every other combo ender in the game. In Super, Light Sobot was briefly airborne and incidentally went over lows. It wasn't super consistent, just an occasional thing. This might have been an accident at the time, but in A they doubled down on it. They made it grounded for the full duration, but added a ton of low invincibility. This is one of the only things that really makes DJ unique compared to the rest of the cast. Characters reliant on a low poke for neutral, like Shoto's with low forward, will get smacked around by random light sobot pokes. Light Sobot also knocks down, and has more range than DJ's other special move enders. So despite being the weakest version of Sobot, it was typically used even when the stronger ones were available, just for the Oki mix-up. Light Sobot was minus 5 on block at release. They eventually made it minus 4 in Ultra, and that single frame actually made it safe against a bunch of characters, at least when spaced. But even now, there are characters who can basically always punish it. This is a huge difference from M. Bison, whose Light Scissor Kick is minus 1 on block while again doing quite a lot of chip damage. Bison's safe Scissor Kick very famously gave him great pressure, and DJ could have had the same if Sobot was a bit safer. EX Sobot is DJ's anti-fireball. You have to be pretty close and pretty quick to get both hits. On fireballs with extended hurtboxes, you'll often only get the first hit at range. And it doesn't work against slow fireballs at most ranges due to poor fireball invincibility. Against some fireballs, it's hard to make it work at all. And these are often the matchups where you need it to work the most. But DJ has his own fireball, so obviously he's not helpless in fireball matchups. EX Sobot actually has full body invincibility for the first 7 frames, so it can technically be used as a true reversal. But 15 frame startup is frustrating. Many meaties can block in time. For whatever reason, you can't do a Sobot while there's a fireball on the screen, even if you have charge. I guess it's because you can't have two fireballs on the screen at once, and the two moves check the same flag since they have the same motion. Charge down, up plus kick is jackknife maximum, DJ's up kick. It's quite an effective anti-air, but the downside is to keep down charge, you've got to sit in place. In this way, it's very similar to Gal's flash kick. It's actually quite a bit better than flash kick as an anti-air though. For one, it's significantly better at hitting directly above DJ's head. Whereas Gal's got a dead zone where flash kick doesn't work. Two, you can get some cool meterless struggles out of it, and the screen carry is fantastic. The startup is also good. The EX version in particular is 4 frames, which is fast enough to beat many safe jumps. Where this move suffers is grounded combos. You have to be insanely close to use it on grounded opponents. and the meterless versions won't hit crouching opponents at all. When DJ very famously doesn't have a good force stain move that cancels. 
So DJ can't usually use up kicks to replace Sobatas and Ender, and it's a shame because it'd be pretty good for its damage, knockdown, and screen carry. So the utility of up kick is sadly pretty limited to anti airs, but at least in that regard it shines. The EX version of Jackknife Maximum is also DJ's invincible reversal. Annoyingly, it didn't hit low profile for a very long time. This means every single one of DJ's reversals failed to beat a meaty low profile attack. Except Reversal Ultra 2, which would obviously be a last resort option for anyone else. I know some characters don't have reversals at all, but this is a good demonstration of how many of DJ's weaknesses were more accidental. He finally got an EX upkick to hit low profile in the Ultra 1.04 patch, which I think was the final balance patch of the game, and only changed a few characters, most notably DJ himself. DJ's final special move is probably his least useful one, but his most interesting one. Charge down, up plus punch is machine gun upper. You can mash punches to give it some extra hits. It's not as simple as mashing as fast as possible, though. In terms of special moves, it's actually really, really strong when optimally mashed. And it's fast enough to cancel from lights. The EX version sets up juggles. You can do up kicks for a one bar combo. Or EX Sobot for a two bar combo. You can even get a juggle to Ultra 2, which is DJ's only good confirm into either Ultra. The damage is actually fantastic considering it's a one bar setup. You can mash punches on the EX version for extra hits but with more scaling. On paper, the mashed version is almost always better since it increases damage. But the mashed version also throws the opponent further away, so your mid-screen combos get a lot harder to land reliably. Also, it's impossible to do the mashed version into Ultra 2 outside the corner, even with a perfect dash ultra. It's hard to place what exactly about this move sucks. It's kind of that he just never has an opportunity to do it. The range is pretty small, so it won't combo from far away. Which means no confirming from lows. And the motion is down charge, so you can't do it from any standing buttons, including DJ's main confirming normal. So it's pretty limited to punish scenarios. But because DJ's generally a defensive character, he has trouble baiting the opponent into a reversal. And that's really annoying because this special is the main way DJ can use meter to increase his damage. So if you can't land machine gun upper, you can't make your combo much stronger without spending a ton of bar on red focus or super. There's one other move I think I should mention. It's actually a command normal and not a special move, but it's very unique and a core part of DJ's kit. Jump down short is knee shot. In terms of damage and hitbox, it's a bit underwhelming. But if you do it on the way up, it kills a lot of the upward momentum of your jump. So DJ can jump from certain ranges and either land in the back with a cross up, or he can land in the front with a knee shot. Also, because DJ falls so quickly, it's moderately hard to react with an anti-air. Unfortunately, because DJ has to do it on the way up, and because the two jump normals have different timings, it's pretty easy to react with blocking. The opponent can treat all jumps like non-cross ups, then react to a full height jump by swapping block directions. Alright, now that we know what we're working with, let's talk about his weirdness. First, I want to talk about his combo routes. As I've showed, DJ has four charge moves. But he has basically no normal strings, which grants inherent charge. The only one he's got is three low jabs into low short or low strong. This combo doesn't even work on all characters, the jabs are only 20 damage and the low strong is a one frame link. And what can you do from here? Both charge down specials are too far. Obviously Sobot is preferred, but the heavy Sobot leaves the opponent standing, so as I said, most people take the light Sobot ender, even though it's weaker, just to get the knockdown.
A combo like this is DJ's only punish or confirm if he doesn't have charge. As you can see, the damage is pretty low. And there isn't a good way to use one or two bars to make it stronger. Even if you FADC the Sobot, you've got a lot of scaling after all. If you don't want to do that, what else can you do? What are his Chargeless Routes supposed to be? He's only got charge moves. Well, mostly linking into low forward, which knocks down. Low forward is a hard knockdown. But since you're not cancelling into it, there's a huge loss in damage compared to the Sobot route. This creates a bizarre scenario with DJ, where his up close damage when he's got charge is actually really massive. But then in his confirms and long range punishes, his damage is abysmal. Let's compare a few other charge characters in a common scenario where you get a punish but don't have charge. Backdashing a command grab. Every other charge character could at least break 200 damage, but now compare DJ. Most charge characters have some kind of combo which either grants inherent charge or doesn't require a charge move ender, but not DJ. I know this charge reliance might not seem like a huge deal, but it actually permeates into his whole kit. I'll give you three quick examples right now. One, if you're trying to frame trap the opponent, you might do plus frame normal into walk up throw or plus frame normal into close medium kick. But oops, you don't have charge, here's your ender. Two, you get a knockdown. Your mix up is cross up medium kick versus non cross up knee shot. If you did cross up, you have no left right charge, gutting your routes. This cross-up versus knee shot scenario is pretty much DJ's only offensive mix-up. But in super, you couldn't do knee shot with down forward or down back. Meaning DJ couldn't easily convert to Sobot even if he landed in the front. And if, when doing this mix-up, the opponent messes up an autocorrect anti-air, you can't easily punish it without walking. And again, if you have to walk, you have no charge. Three, Sobot FADC is plus enough for combos, but, uh oh, you just dashed, you have no charge. And it's either use chargeless combos or buffer charge using DJ's weak jab. And your potential routes are really stiff due to that charging. You can't get a machine gun upper here. Okay, charge reliance is obviously a big issue for DJ, but is it enough to make him a bad character? Not really. Let's examine some other weaknesses. I think a pretty good one is anti airs. As I said, Upkick is actually one of the best anti airs in the game. But I hope you're sitting on charge non-stop, because DJ's other anti airs are pretty horrible. DJ's sweep is low profile, so you can use it to dodge a jump normal and punish the landing frames. But if the opponent empty jumps, they can land into the sweep and block it, and it's really unsafe. The sweep does have an actual anti air hitbox. But whether it hits or not is a total crapshoot. Basically, all of DJ's other anti air options either trade or lose. His best one is probably Far Strong, which was buffed as an anti air in AE 2012 yet still loses all the time. It's also a proximity normal, which can sometimes come out as close strong. 
Quest Strong is a pretty good anti-air, but it has a different anti-air timing than Far Strong, so you don't want to get the wrong one on accident. Here's Far Strong working clean, just as a proof of concept. Ironically, I think your best anti-air is just meeting the opponent mid-air. The next thing I want to talk about are his annoying combo routes. I consider this something different than his charge reliance, because as you'll see, almost every combo DJ has will have some issues even if you already have charge. Because of his mid-combo charging and lack of frame advantage normals, virtually every combo has one or several crouch jabs. It's a good crouch jab, but it's only 20 damage. Tide is the weakest attack in the game. DJ's strongest special cancel is Crouch Hard Punch, at a whopping 90. This is pretty standard for a cancelable heavy in USF4. The problem is that Crouch Hard Punch only cancels on the first active frame. See how I'm hitting when my elbow is above Ryu's head? The hitbox is horrible on the first active frame. I'm pretty close to Ryu here, right? Well, the first active frame missed, so my Crouch Fierce wasn't ever cancelable. And I can't even get closer because I'd lose charge. And it's not just a range thing. Here's it whiffing during a focus crumple. DJ has one more heavy cancel, and it's almost legendary how useless it is. Close Fierce does an impressive 120 damage. But only the first hit cancels, and the first hit only does 50. So this is weaker than cancelling his mediums, which also come out faster than Close Fierce. And his mediums already go into all versions of his special moves. So the extra hit stun of a heavy is useless. The main advantage it offers DJ over his other cancels is that it forces stand. Except, it whiffs on most crouching opponents. Nice force stand normal, bro. Not that it really matters. Even if it worked properly, the only new combo that would give DJ is a way to land upkicks on crouching opponents. But you'd have to cancel a standing move to a flash kick motion, and it's not like that's a particularly great ender anyway. Also, all of his combos are just really tight. Even if you already have charge, DJ's strongest link is close forward low strong. Which has no down charge, so Sobot cancels only. Technically, his strongest link is actually close forward far strong, which is the link I was gonna show. But this link doesn't even work on Ryu because his real animation causes the first frame of far strong to whiff. I didn't even plan for this to be in the video. Regardless, both of these are one frame links. And your strongest two-hit combo, which maintains down charges, I'm not joking, low jab, low strong. Again, also one frame. This is your only route to confirm EX Machine Gun Upper. If you don't want to do one frame links, and who does, his only alternative is the first hit of far forward. This is actually much preferred since it's a two frame link instead of one frame, but it's a standing normal, so only Sobot cancels. And you lose 30 damage compared to low strong before scaling. This is subjective, but I'd also say DJ is playing with some mediocre Ultras. Ultra 1 won't connect properly on airborne opponents. Not only does this mean it won't reliably punish focus, but if you combine the fact that it's a double sonic boom motion which requires charging, you can't use it in time after a focus dash. Even if you focus without dashing, Ultra Wob will fall out after getting some pitiful damage. And because the dash for focus has to be buffered during the focus hit, doing a dash ultra from focus seems to be impossible. Your dash comes out way after you input it, so your ultra charge is gone by the time you can do inputs. So focus is a no-go, and there are virtually no other combos into Ultra 1 besides a very weird one I'll mention later, so it's very difficult to confirm. Ultra 1 was intended as an anti-fireball ultra, but the bad startup and poor range make it surprisingly bad at punishing fireballs. In fact, because it's non-cinematic, it's possible to hit the extended herbox of a fireball and have that fail to combo to the rest of the ultra. Between the natural pushback of fireballs, the need to charge, and the inability to advance while keeping charge, it's actually very difficult to be both close enough to ultra and to have charge.
While Ultra 2 has one setup besides focus, provided you can actually do Walker Dash Ultras. If you can't, you're limited to only landing Ultras in the corner or in punish scenarios. And this should go without saying, but DJ rarely gets the opportunity to use EX Machine Gun Blow on a fully cornered opponent. What's especially annoying is Ultra 2 swaps sides, so if you get a corner connect, now you're mid-screen. DJ's biggest weakness is the most complex and hard to show in a short video, that he has no good specific strengths. He's not truly the best at anything. For example, here are some strong tools other characters have which DJ doesn't. He can't have ADC his invincible reversal. That means no combos on hit and no safety on block. Also, it's EX only. He's generally got low damage, due partially to a reliance on lights and combos which add tons of scaling. And he can't easily land his higher damage options because he has no strong mix-ups, so reliance on zoning. You can't even frame trap because walking forward kills charge. Also, he can't easily make comebacks. And he's got almost no good ultra confirms. You've got some red focus stuff you can land, but it's expensive, difficult to go into from lights, and only goes into ultra too. Well, what are DJ's unique strengths? What does he have that other characters would love? Well, he can blow up dive kicks and ambiguous cross-ups with his up kick. He's got nice, looping, ambiguous cross-ups of his own between jump medium kick and knee shot. And he can blow up lows with a single 90 damage special move. It seems like a lot of these issues would have easy fixes, but rarely has DJ gotten pure quality of life buffs. Almost every time Capcom buffed him, they buffed part of the move while nerfing another part, so DJ gets no net gain. When they gave Light Sobot low invincibility in AE, they also made it grounded so it could now be thrown. When they made the EX Machine Gun Upper to Ultra 2 juggle more consistent, they took 40 damage off of a successful Ultra 2. When they gave Low Roundhouse more active frames, they cut its total movement range. When they made Fireball recover faster, they made it counter hit punishable. When they gave Knee Shot more hit stun so you could link it to stronger normals, they took 20 damage off of it so your combos end up only barely stronger. When they made EX Machine Gun Upper faster and throw Invincible so it would work as an alternative reversal option, they made it more unsafe on block, which hurt it and dropped combos. Additionally, rather than fixing DJ's well-known issues, a lot of buffs were just bizarre and unrelated to anything. In Arcade Edition, they made it so far hard punch on counter hit would launch the opponent, allowing for a juggle into far roundhouse or sobot. This is extremely novel, and a bit like a proto crush counter. Counter hits almost never changed move properties in SO4. But the counter hit didn't work properly as an anti-air, which was the only scenario where Far Fierce was really used. And it also didn't work versus crouching opponents. Both cases were fixed, across two separate balance patches, but both times the changes were treated as buffs rather than bug fixes. Sad when DJ's main buff in a patch was one of his tools actually working properly. In AE 2012, he gained the ability to cancel a super into Ultra 1. The damage and chip of this sequence are massive, and DJ admittedly can land a super fairly easily, not to mention he now has one Ultra 1 setup instead of zero. Of course, meter is very precious for other things in SF4, and supers are rarely used because of that, even for DJ. That's not to say it's been all bad for DJ across patches. He's actually got some pretty meaningful buffs here and there. Originally, his light so bot was too slow to combo from light normal cancels. But they made it faster, so it would combo in any cancel. In AE, his fireball recovery got much shorter. Considering how reliant he is on his fireballs, this is quite a meaningful change. Also in AE, he got a cancel from far forward. This is faster than low strong, so it made DJ's combos a lot more consistent. Low strong went from 60 damage to 80. This is DJ's most used cancel, and having heavy damage on it is pretty nice. DJ also benefited from the ultra mechanic changes. He can use red focus both in max damage combos from Sobot, and to give himself a chargeless route into Ultra 2 from Close Fierce. Yeah. 
So why were so many people asking for a video on Ultra DJ specifically? As I said, Ultra DJ is almost certainly the best version of the character, since most patches were net buffs for him, if only barely. Well, when USF4 was being developed, the dev team changed hands, and a team who had never worked on the previous versions of SF4 was put in charge to head the Ultra patch. To accommodate their inexperience with the current needs of the game, Capcom made USF4 a fan request balance patch, where people wrote in their most requested changes for their characters. One of DJ's most requested changes was to make Light Sobot safer, because it's his main combo ender, and using it to beat lows means using it in neutral, when the opponent could potentially block it. When USF4 was released, Light Sobot went from minus 5 on block to minus 3, but to compensate, the developers removed the low invincibility. This caused enormous backlash from DJ players. After all, they removed one of DJ's three good qualities, and the main reason to use Light Sobot in neutral in the first place, so the safety didn't even matter anymore. And in the same patch, the autocorrect of EX upkicks was nerfed, removing another one of DJ's only strengths. To add insult to injury, during DJ's official patch notes video, Combofiend even acknowledged that the character had been low tier for the entire competitive history of the game. Bizarre decision Capcom made to nerf a bottom tier character became quite well known in the community, and it was around that time that most people became aware that DJ was a bad character, which is why people were asking me for Ultra DJ specifically. Light Sobot actually got its low invincibility back during the 1.04 balance patch, which is an often forgotten balance patch midway through USF4, which didn't contain that many balance changes. Amusingly, while making it low invincible again, Capcom made it minus 4 on block instead of minus 3, showing they still weren't willing to give DJ an unequivocal buff. At the end of the day, Light Sobot is only a single frame better on block than AE 2012, and EX Upkick stayed nerfed. So is DJ actually bad? I say, kind of. His zoning with fireballs and anti-airs is alright, and if you actually go through his matchups, he usually goes 4-6 or 5-5 against almost every character in the game. In terms of low tiers, that's actually pretty good balance. Thanks for watching, and if I left anything out, do me a favor and let us all know in the comments.